horse races were held in Englefield Green sporadically between 1729 and 1733, and in 1734 the meeting was moved to Runnymede. The popularity of the event grew until by 1738 it was a three-day meet attended by royalty and notable members of the English aristocracy. Royal patronage continued until the reign of Queen Victoria and by this time the crowds were so large that the authorities had difficulty policing the event. By 1884 the large crowds and unwanted pickpockets led the police to refuse to attend the meeting anymore and so the races came to an end. This painting evokes some of the sights, sounds and conversations that might have taken place at the races in 1832. My dear Mrs. Neville, how delightful to see you. And what a good attendance we have for the racing. Such a fine day, too. Oh, Mr. Meredith, good day to you, sir. Indeed it is. As my husband remarked, it is weather fit for a king. Should he by chance grace us with his presence today? Well, the late king was here but four years ago in 1828. And as Prince of Wales in the last century, several of his horses were entered for races on a number of occasions. He was, as is well known, a great gambler. Indeed, my husband has told me of a card game played here at the Egham Races. Apparently, the first Marquis of Butte, who had married into the Coote's banking family, was minded to lose so as not to upstage the prince. <laughs> In return, he was awarded the royal account for the bank. <laughs> I imagine that King William may be more circumspect in his attachment to the sport. But I understand that he is, nevertheless, uh, a keen follower. So we may hope that he will continue the royal connection here? Mm, it seems likely. Did you know that it is almost a hundred years since racing began at this venue? Good gracious. Oh, yes. <clears throat> uh, it is said that it was the proximity, of course, to both Windsor and Aston that made it a popular choice with the uh, jockey club, it being a comparatively short distance to walk the horses between meets. The nobility are certainly well in evidence here today. Look, here come the Duke of Richmond and Lord Fitzclarence to watch the way in. Yes, I believe they are both appointed stewards of the course. This is such a wonderfully historic setting for the course, is it not? To think, it was right here on these very meadows in 1215 that the barons forced King John's hand and Magna Carta was sealed. One might almost say that Runnymede is the birthplace of democracy. How appropriate that the event is commemorated in the next race, the Magna Carta Stakes. And do you intend to wager on a horse in the race? Mm, mm, yeah, my, my fancy is for Damascus in Sir George Heathcote's colour of crimson. Look, oh, see, there, in front of us now. Oh, yes, I see. What a fine-looking animal. Yeah. You'll see from the card that he is by reveller out of Jane Shaw. Mm, perchance I will return home a richer man. Well, I wish you good luck. And I trust you will be on your guard against pickpockets, which I understand are attracted to this place. Yeah, thank you, yes. Uh, I shall heed your warning. But I believe that the problem is much uh, abated nowadays, though the scoundrels were certainly a great curse some years ago. I have enjoyed our conversation, Mr. Meredith, but I'm afraid I must bid you farewell and rejoin my husband. Uh, I hope we may see you and your wife at the ball in the Assembly Rooms in Egham tomorrow night. 